Hi, this is Sean Gilligan from Long's Peak Advisory Services. We put this presentation together to help explain what the GIP standards are, including why the standards are necessary, why firms should comply with the standards, and to provide some clarity on common misconceptions about GIPs. We hope you find the presentation useful, and we encourage you to reach out to us if you have additional questions that we could help clarify. You can feel free to send us an email or give us a call using the contact information provided here. Okay, so what are the GIP standards? The Global Investment Performance Standards are an ethical framework that standardize how investment managers calculate and report their investment performance to prospective investors. Standardized presentations help prospective investors make meaningful comparisons between firms regardless of location or regulatory jurisdiction. This comparability simplifies the due diligence process for prospective investors and allows them to make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of similar strategies that promotes fair competition and the use of industry best practices through self-regulation. Currently, there are 37 countries that have officially adopted GIPs, making it a true global standard. So why are the GIPs standards necessary? GIPs is designed to address potentially misleading practices employed by some investment managers when presenting investment performance to prospective clients. Examples of misleading practices include cherry-picking accounts, which means showing a strategy's best performer as a representation of how the strategy as a whole performed, using selective time periods, presenting the performance of a strategy only for the period it performed best while leaving out the worst performing periods, utilizing model or back-tested results when the results of actual live accounts could have been used in the presentation, and survivorship bias. This refers to only including a firm's current open accounts in the historical performance, which could be misleading since the terminated accounts may have been the worst performers. Under GIPS, discretionary fee-paying accounts must be included in at least one composite based on the strategy they follow. Performance is then reported at the composite level, based on the aggregation of the accounts within the composite. Composites only include actual discretionary accounts, not models, and it is required to present each composite's performance statistics for each annual period. Finally, terminated accounts must also be included in the historical performance record. These requirements, implemented in conjunction with the rest of the GIPS requirements, help prevent compliant firms from manipulating their results and improves comparability between firms that are GIPS compliant and manage similar strategies. So why become GIPS compliant? GIPS compliance offers investment managers both marketing and compliance benefits. According to eVestment, two out of three searches made in their database by investors or consultants are said to exclude firms that are not GIPS compliant which means if you are not GIPS compliant, you will not even be considered by these investors. Being able to check the box in RFPs and consultant databases indicating that your firm is GIPS compliant can be a valuable marketing benefit. Compliant firms are required to document GIPS policies and procedures. Creating and maintaining these policies is an excellent way to ensure your firm maintains strong internal controls. Compliance with GIPS also demonstrates a commitment to best practices to both prospective clients and to regulators which can be immensely valuable to your compliance department. Next, we're going to talk about a couple of common misconceptions about GIPS that discourage investment managers from complying. The first is that GIPS compliance is burdensome and expensive. It is true that the initial process of becoming compliant can be time-consuming. However, if sufficient time is put in at the start of the process to create detailed GIPS policies or procedures and to construct composites that consistently follow these policies, the ongoing maintenance of your GIPS compliance should be very manageable. For firms that do not have the resources available internally to bring their firm into compliance, GIPS consulting firms such as ours, Long's Peak Advisory Services, are available to assist with the documentation of your policies and procedures, the construction of your composites, and the creation of your compliant presentations. Verification is often the largest direct expense associated with GIPS compliance, but it's important to remember that verification is not required. It is recommended though, and can add value to your marketing efforts, but if cost is an issue, you could always become compliant now and wait to add verification at a later date when it fits into your budget. If your firm can comply with all of the GIPS requirements without the help of a GIPS consultant and elects not to be verified, there is no direct cost for a firm to be GIPS compliant. Another common misconception some firms have is that GIPS is not relevant for their firm. Firms who only manage pooled funds often believe this because, understandably, creating a composite with only one account seems pointless. But when marketing a composite rather than the fund itself, adjustments can be made to the fund's fees to make the performance results more representative of what a separate account would have experienced. 
Using a composite and removing the effect of admin fees will improve your comparability to a competitor who is marketing a composite of separate accounts. Another example of firms who think GIPS is not relevant for them are firms who manage customized portfolios. A composite of accounts that are managed strictly to a model will have lower dispersion, but meaningful composites can still be built for more customized accounts based on the general risk level and objectives of the client. For example, many wealth management firms build broadly defined multi-asset class composites such as conservative, moderate, growth, and aggressive. Despite the higher dispersion, as long as all the accounts in the composite have a similar risk tolerance and objective, the resulting composite statistics will provide meaningful information for prospective clients seeking a similar strategy. I hope this presentation helped provide you with a basic understanding of GIPS. If you have questions about the standards, we'd love to talk to you. Long's Peaks professionals have extensive experience helping firms become GIPS compliant, as well as helping firms maintain their compliance with GIPS on an ongoing basis. Please send us an email or give us a call to discuss how we can help you.